I'd like to do an example where we use both the trapezoid rule and Simpson's rule, and both of these come up in approximating the definite integral throughout um, the trapezoid rule and Simpson's rule, we use the standard partition of the interval from A to B, where you take subintervals of equal length delta x, which is B minus A over N. It's also important, as we saw in class, that with Simpson's rule, that N is even. So now let's do an example. What I'd like to do is I would like to use the fact that the natural log of x is the area under the curve of 1 over t between 1 and x. You could take that as a definition of the natural log if you wanted to, but we will use this to approximate the natural log of 2, both using the trapezoid rule and Simpson's rule. And if you look at the graph of y equals 1 over t between 1 and 2, then you look at what the, the regions, the areas that the trapezoid rule is calculating and the areas that the Simpson's rule is calculating, you will see that they look very much like the area under the curve, which is telling you both of these will be pretty close to the natural log of 2. Okay, so now let's begin. We have some things in common in both of these, and the, it, which is delta t. We have the interval one to two. This will be b minus a over n. Delta t is one tenth. And similarly, we have the same n and the same interval. We have the same delta t. We also have the same partition which we start at 1, I'll write it as 10 over 10, just so everything has the same denominator, and then you march forward by delta t until you get to the other endpoint. So we'll have 12 over 10 all the way to 19 over 10 and 20 over 10. And the partition over here is the exact same one. So we have 10 over 10, 11 over 10, 12 over 10, to 19 over 10, and 20 over 10, okay? So this is, for instance, T0, T1, T2. This would be T9 and T10. Okay, so now we have to do trapezoid rule over here. And as we just discussed, the formula here over 2 times. And then we take f of t0, which is 1 over 1 in this case, which is also 1, but I'm still going to write it as 10 over 10. Then 2 times f of t1, which is going to be 10 over 11, plus 2 times f of t2, which is 10 over 12 plus, go all the way out to two times f of, oops, two times f of t9, which is 10 over 19, and then plus one times one over this, which is a half, one over two, but I have it written as one over 20 over 10, and we get 10 over 20. The only reason I wrote it that way is because you see with this 1 tenth, I can do a slight simplification before I enroll this into my calculator. So this is a half, a tenth, plus 2 over 11, plus 2 over 12. It goes out to 2 over 19, plus 1 over 20. So when we put this into our calculator, approximately 0 0.6937714. This is what we get in our calculator. You can enter it all in in one line, for example. Now, let's do this one. What changes? Well, 
we have, as I mentioned, we have the same delta t and the same partition and the same function, the same interval. Everything is the same except what we are using to approximate the formula is slightly different. So we have delta t over 3 and then we start off with f of t0 which again is 10 over 10, but then we have four. Remember the, the ti's where i is odd get fours in front of them, and the ti's where i is even have, have twos in front of them, except for the very last one. So we have a four times 10 over 11, and then we have a two times 10 over 12, and then we would have for example, a four times 10 over 13. The next one would be a two all the way out. This is T9, which is an odd one. So we have a four times 10 over 19 plus is gonna be a one times 10 over 20. And then, you know, I can take one step I'm not sure why I did this one in black and this one in blue. <laughs> in any case, I think you can survive. Okay, I'll take one step to just multiply all those through by a tenth. We get one tenth plus four over 11 um, plus two over 12. Uh, then we have a four over 13. All the way to four over 19 plus one over 20. And when you, so maybe I should put this part in a box to separate it from the calculations. But when you put this in a calculator, we get that this is approximately 0 0.6931502, excuse me. So what we have found, this is our approximation of LN2 using the trapezoid rule. This is our approximation of LN2 using the Simpsons rule. And this is a much better approximation as we know the Simpsons rule um, gives better approximations than the trapezoid rule.